この番組はご覧のスポンサーの提供でお送りしますオーライディ、ウェルカムエブリワン、アイムティアブ、アイムヒューフォーフリーレン、エピソード23レン、アンウィーアーバッドヘッドインティアセカンステージオフィエクザムシチュエーション、ティング。An individual lesson、uh, where all of our former friends and allies will become new enemies,、uh, future enemies. It feels like labyrinths are something like a through line for this week or a thread to pull on. In Mushoku Tensei, we're heading into one, a big one that's been built up for a while. In ReZero, we're stuck between a couple of locations that feel labyrinthine.、Uh, Temples, and then a library that feels endless and like it's trapping us. Here in Free Ren, we venture into a labyrinth as part of a challenge, an exam, a dungeon delve in a traditional sense. In Jujutsu Kaisen, our characters are wandering the subway stations and the tight, confined, labyrinthine streets of Shibuya. And <sighs> for what should be today's show, Gundam, The labyrinth is all metaphorical, and I'm the one stuck in it because I can't find my way out and I feel stuck. <laughs> Either way, it feels like labyrinths, mazes, underground, carved out, twisty, turny pits are really the name of the game for this week. It's weird. It's weird how things align like that sometimes. It's like the stars aligning. I'm pretty sure that there's nothing actually going on about that. It's just co- confirmation bias and coincidence. It still feels weird. I wonder if there's anything to be learned from it, even if it doesn't actually mean anything in and of itself. We're able to project meaning onto weird events and things, so maybe I'll find meaning in it as this week goes on. Maybe it'll just be a cool labyrinth. An old king's tomb with cool traps and fun things to overcome and exciting adventures for our characters to adventure up against. That would be really cool too. That would be really excellent. We just came off of a nice transitional episode that sort of pulled us back into our emotional realm and our character interaction realm and the through lines about time and、uh, time passing and information being transferred and the effects that we have on one another.、Um, sort of getting revisited on this in between episode. And now it's curious what are we going to be feeling like again? Is it going to feel as exam y and as tournament arc ish as the first portion of this exam? Or is it going to have more of a traditional dungeon delving fantasy sort of experience? I don't know. And another testament to the power of Free Ren is that I'm okay either way. I don't care if we go back to something we've already hashed out. I know we're going to do it well. I don't care if we do something new that I'm not expecting because I'm pretty sure we're going to do it well too. It's a fucking exciting place to be when you can just trust a show. I've said it before, and I'll probably say it again by the end of this thing. It's really cool not caring so much which direction we end up heading because I'm confident that it's going to be interesting and exciting and everything that I need it to be. From the outset, there's no feeling of disappointment of like, oh, why didn't we go this way? We could have done that. Even in moments that. Kind of hurt or suck. It's like, oh man, but but Zine could have stayed with the party and we'd be going on. It's like, yeah, but we learn things from this. This is the way the story goes, and that feels right and accurate to the real world and to real life and to emotions and to people in a more poignant and compelling way. Oh, fucking no. <sighs> I'm gonna draw something. It'll be a labyrinth. I don't think I've ever drawn a maze. I don't fucking know how, but I'm just gonna pull out a ruler and get at it. Oh, yeah, when I was conceptualizing this, I had like a particular idea. Okay, I did have this idea for it, so it was like this. This. Oh, these could be the. Okay, so if drop B 
Bing bong bong bong. Bing bing bong bing bong bong bong. Wee. Don't ignore all that. Bing bong bong bing bong bing 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 bong 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 bong. Whoop whoop boop 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 ba. So if you get dropped in in one eye, you make your way all the way over to the other eye. That's my first ever maze. It's amazing. And this is the old king, by the way. <laughs> Turns out the old king is a total dork and doesn't show up on camera. That's fine. Lovely. All right. That's everything. We're ready to roll. We've got episode 23 of Free Run up and ready to go. There will be two versions. Picture in picture available in the description. Timer on YouTube. Beep beep timer to count you down. And early access on the Patreon. Thanks for joining me as always. Let's dive into episode 23 of Free Ren and see if it once again is freaking awesome. I think it will be. Beep beep timer. The king. Yeah, what have you got for us? Oh, tiny child off to the side. Sense. Yeah, people don't pass your test. Hot. Ha. OP? Okay. Cool. She's just introduced to the space. She says some stuff. Believes it shouldn't be a challenge. Significantly. If you meet the bar. I wonder if it'll be genuinely difficult or if there'll be like a trick to it. Like it's an attitude thing. I believe that Free Run should breeze through it. She's Free Run. But maybe not. Damn, how did we get here? We're in such a different place than we were a few episodes ago. There are so many characters, and, like, the vibe is totally different. How did we suddenly transition to shonen battle anime? <laughs> how did that happen? Smoothly is how it happened. Smoothly. Conquering the labyrinth. Yes! Yes! Okay! I've played this roguelike. Oh. And yet, in our OP, we have a, an image of a fight happening down there. A pacifist. Oh. The fact that no one's been able to do it. She gonna be waiting. With all of us? Maybe via her weird teleportation thing? Oh. Break it? Whoa! Big boy comes out and helps? Whoa! That's terrifying. Okay. Okay, so there's an emergency way out. 
Can you throw somebody else's? Can you throw somebody else's bottle and like break their bottle and make them get get yoinked out? Everything else is on the table. A pacifist, but they can all fight. So people make their choices, team up if they're gonna team up, talk it through and strategize. Sweet. What do you think, Free Ren Fern? Just hanging out? You gonna be the first in? Nobody wants to be the first in. Hi, Denkin. Huh. Oh, he knows stuff. Fuck, I love that. I love that shit. Hmm. Bye. True. It's a prisoner's dilemma, isn't it? So it's like a reversed prisoner's dilemma. Yeah, it is. It is. What that attitude for sure. So maybe you should listen to his ass. Maybe you should listen to the guy who knows stuff, idiot. Enjoy getting eaten, bro. No, Saitama. You, homie. He didn't pat Ere, but yeah. <laughs> That's such a cute run. Thunk, 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 thunk. Beep boop pop beep boop boop pop. It's gonna be factions. Hi. Hi there. Yeah, you're watching us. Ooh, do you? Ha! Wow, what a read. What a fun read. I'm glad we get to have her along for us. That's so sick. I also hope we get to see more Dankin stuff, because he knows his shit. Fuck, I love the idea that they're just dungeons, chillaxin. How does she know? Stay left? Oh! Oh! Oh, mini-map! Oh, I love these locations. Oh, it's so sick. It's so big, and... Fern's fuck, uh, free run's fucking perception score is obscene. <laughs> did did Flave like force you to clear a bajillion of them? Oh, very hero thing. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Which, 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 which. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Well, he wants to clear the whole thing, right? <laughs> He's such a gamer! He's such a gamer! You gotta clear it all, come on, man! It's like the way that people have different attitudes toward this stuff. That's so funny. What is the best in life? To be able to have fun. Soldo, soldo. Ah. 
Eyes on the pri- not even eyes on the prize. Eyes right in front of him. Oh, got her! Oh, got her! Pink. <laughs> Ah! Ah, it's so cute! Oh my god! I just can't, it's so cute! Are you two, you going in? What's up, Richter? You guys should join Dankin. Not gonna say anything, guys? Oh. What about you two? Last ones? Almost. You still got a party of five. Hmm. Hmm. Except Freeman and Fern. <laughs> Never mind, Freeman and Fern count. <laughs> Got two free run in a mimic. <laughs> cut two, cut two, cut two, please. Holy shit. Please, please, please. Yes. Fuck. <sighs> it could be a mimic. <laughs> but grimoires, but grimoires, dude, but grimoires, but books, <laughs> don't you get? <laughs> oh. <laughs> No! No, you're gonna get eaten. <laughs> oh, holy shit. <laughs> Just like it's not. <laughs> not even abnormal, it's just the normal way of doing things. Okay, second half, here we go. Oh shit, that was funny. Was there a guy burned into the ceiling? Yeah. Oh. Schmooshed. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, those are going to come to life. Yep. <laughs> ah, ah. They look sick, too. Sick. I mean, they're nothing burgers, right? They're just annoying as fu- Oh, fuck! Teamwork. Cool defensive magic, and reinforcing it? Whoa. Or reflecting it, or something. That was really unique. And that was just sick nasty. Richter, through the walls? <laughs> I 
we don't leave them behind. Oh, no luck. Oh, yeah. Get the fuck out of here. Hello! Thank you! Get the fuck back! Okay, bye! Those things are dope. Down to four. I forget what her name is, the tall, hot, blonde. Yeah, that spike room was crazy! He's <laughs> done this so many times. <laughs> yeah, how do you, how do you get out of here? Or isn't she gonna get stuck? Oh. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking dog. Oh, it worked. Fun cut. <laughs> Wait. Oh. <laughs> so that's what keeps out. <laughs> oh, John Sava. Stupid. That's so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, have they reset? Oh no, it's a different a different room. <laughs> so good at this. Yeah. Oh? Apparently some Deliton collects them. Huh. Uh, uh, the evil thing. <laughs> dee, 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 dee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this can't be all that there is to this. <laughs> is that a goal going hammer say hammer space? Mmm. She's a weirdo. <laughs> yeah, free run makes some sense. Mmm. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> One piece at a time, just like email. Oh, I don't know. Her. What does she have found that I can't see? Ah. Ah, sharing in things. Cool moment. Brutal dungeon. I'm sure you can have fun even here. Ooh, that's the door in the OP, right? What? 
wonder. Hello, this looks like a battle room. Hmm. Mm. Mm. New bills here. Flowers. Sick. Dropped. Okay. Whoosh. Oh, hello, three. Oh, they're them. It's Dark Link. It's the Dark Link fight. Yeah, rock, paper, scissors, that shit. So will we have to have Fern and Free Ren fight Fern and Free Ren as well? Oh, yeah, we're dealing with the duos on Laufen as well, this brutal dungeon. Oh, and with powers that are not their powers. They're better than them. Sick. Fuck, that was... Mm -mm. That was super cool. Nice, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder who's responsible for that. Sense? Yeah, they don't trick us. For now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How would any of anybody do against just themselves? Like, 1v1 against a better you, you're gonna lose, I think. Everybody's reaching big doorways. Right? Oh. And hanging above us is... Is it Free Ren? Oh no. Oh no. Oh yeah. We would lose and die. Oh! <laughs> That's so scary! That's the Dark Souls boss, man! <laughs> <laughs> That's a Dark Souls boss. The fucking Ford of the Boreal Valley music starts playing. Holy shit. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, okay, okay.
Please look into my eyes. Perfect replicas. How fascinating. Lots of layers to the replica thing. Statues have been a huge element of free run so far. It's unclear who's making those statues, but also statues at the outset of the dungeon are a huge element, and I wonder who they're really of. How very interesting. Okay. Over the whole episode, it's a wonderful, wonderful time. A great joy to watch and experience. Most of it is totally fine and normal. <laughs> like, not super exceptional or extraordinary. Just that baseline free run stuff. Which, in any other show, I would be spending time here being like, Whoa, how do they do that? Because it just sucked me into the world. It made me feel so good. And, like, I'm part of everything. And everything flows so well. And I, I'm i curious about everybody's mental state and what they're thinking and doing. Every single moment and every single line. And it all says everything that I need it to in every moment and, like, makes these interactions feel right and curious and interesting. Finding out about the cool golems is really cool, and the execution of them later is really cool. The infighting amongst everybody and the lack of trust is fascinating. The way that people in a big group can't decide whether to group up or go do a thing is so very real, and the sort of internal conflict that they get when people have different ideas about where to go, and how that ripples out to the rest of the group and prevents them from all working together because one person avoids it and puts up an argument against it, super fascinating. Yes, it would be better if they all went with Duncan. It would be better for us to all cooperate, but no, no selfishness. And I said it's like a, it's like a, a prisoner's dilemma. It's not quite like a prisoner's dilemma. But in some ways it is. It's like if you're willing and able to trust the other people in your in, in your group, then you're all going to benefit from that. But if there's any indication of lack of trust, then they're going to be benefiting and you're going to be failing. So you might as well go alone. But not knowing what challenges are going to come forward in the in the dungeon. Well, much better to be in a group, it turns out. Very cool. Why don't they realize working together is better? Well, no chance of that. So we'll go. Now, Sense has had her eye on Free Ren since the beginning, since she saw the explosion of the giant barrier thing and has been interested. It seems likely that she was going to come and follow them regardless, because she's curious. You seem like you'll have the safest time. You'd better not interfere. Fascinating. I will not interfere, nor will I assist you. And then we enter into the space. I have to make a note and just say that I love the spaces. Everyone's really good about backgrounds and spaces and locations in general, whether they're cityscapes or landscapes or big mountainous blizzards. But we haven't really done a lot of dungeons except in, like, individual shot terms, like single shots of the place where the hero's sword is, or little in interim moments where Free Run gets stuck in a, in a mimic or something that we don't really get to see and be there for. Actually going through and mapping this space in this montage that we get and showing us what the space looks like invests me in the space of this dungeon. The auto-lit candles everywhere are so very dungeon decor-y, like clearly magical, unclear how they work. Minimap. I just, I, mundane magics in this world are my favorite, my favoritest thing, and they continue to be my favoritest thing, and I love them very much. Freerun's whole attitude toward exploring this dungeon is really cool and really interesting, and finding out where it came from, that she's, like, learned the proper protocols for gaming from Big Brother Hemel, who was gaming before her, is sort of the way that I see it. Because it's like, in any sort of dungeon-crawling game, very often you have the ability to drop down to a lower level before you explore everything. And there are 100% a couple of schools of thought on that. There are people who will want to, like, rush through it. And there are, like, ultra-completionists, self-included, who will want to find everything on every floor of the dungeon and defeat every monster and make sure they get every bit of experience and every item and every level up and every potion, even though they're probably not going to use them before they proceed to the next step. I want to map the whole thing. I want to find all the secrets. I don't care if it wastes my entire game and I die and I fail because of it. It wouldn't have been a success if I made it to the end of the dungeon and I hadn't explored the entire dungeon. I have to do it piece by piece, level by level. And then in D&D &D terms, like, well, on a, on a different note, you have to explore the whole dungeon. Because if your DM is a dick or has any idea how old school D&D &D dungeons used to be run, they're gonna bring monsters out from behind you if you don't explore where the monsters are. If you go through a hallway and there's a secret door in that hallway, maybe when you walk by it, the secret door just had treasure 
in it, but once you've walked by it, that secret door leads to a room full of goblins. I don't know how they got there. I don't know why they're there, but they're going to pop out behind you, and another group's going to pop out in front of you, and they're going to all start shooting arrows at you, and you're going to be stuck and fucked from both sides. DP. Uh, anyway, it's just an amazing piece of, like, semi-silly, semi-video game-y world logic executed in real terms for free Ren because it's real to them, it's real to her, that going and exploring the whole dungeon and finding all the loot and all the treasure is actually fun and valuable. There's something meaningful about it in a way that didn't make sense to free Ren initially and doesn't make sense to Fern now, but then comes to make sense to free Ren and becomes a part of her, her behaviors, and then comes to make sense to Fern, even though it hasn't become a part of her behaviors, it's a part of, like, how she sees Free Ren enjoying this stuff, and it's rubbed off in terms of how she's approached magicking as a whole. So it has had an impact. That behavior has latched itself onto each of these characters in turn, and continues to affect and alter their lives moving forward in really interesting ways. So that piece, I think, is really cool. The piece that I want to extract from this episode as useful comes from Hemel, though, as it so very often does. Let's continue on through the episode, and we'll get to it when, it, when we get to it. Because I've so far just talked about broad strokes about the way the story has been executed for this episode, and broad strokes about the visual language and thinking that the space is cool, which we're going to get into a little bit more. And then we'll come up out of that when we have that conversation about Hemel and junk and treasure and finding stuff. <laughs> I love these little moments of extreme perception from Free Ren, just noticing everything. And he loved dungeons. I didn't always love dungeons or know so much about them. It was Hemel who loved them. We entered them to hunt down monsters. They excited him. It doesn't make sense, but they did. A very hero thing for him to do and be. A, a very hero thing. But one that fits so well and one that then is given more information to us. Here's the route. It leads directly to the bottom of the dungeon. We can finish this thing, kill the monster at the base, and be done. No, let's head back to the last branch. But we're looking for the monster. Ch -ch -ch. No, no, Ison. One must explore the entire floor before proceeding to the next one. Based on what? Based on what book of strategy? None. It's just Hemo's way of doing things. Every adventurer knows that. You just made it up right? You think I'm being foolish, but isn't it best to be able to have fun while helping people? I'm not sure how that line fits. Just not sure. But it is the best to be able to have fun. It won't always be like this. They will become more life-threatening. Fair, but I will not allow that to change my enjoyment. It's like an attitude toward life and existence. Frame it out. The world is a giant dungeon. There are dangers at every corner and treasure to be found in unexpected places. As we travel along, we dive deeper into it, or we back out, depending on our willingness to engage. And Hemel's attitude is to explore and experience all layers, and to explore them completely before moving on. Not to rush, but to run at your own pace, and to explore them completely. In living in life terms, that might be exploring yourself exploring your space, exploring the, the world around you, exploring interactions with other people, exploring types of relationships, stuff like that. Exploring it all, living it all, and living it all with goals in mind, but not rushing toward them. What he ends up actually saying is that I'll keep on having this fun, this specific, isolated, small-scale fun, the fun of clearing each floor, of clearing each level, of mapping the whole path of experiencing it all and one day before you know it i'll have saved the world what a strange attitude isn't it it's exactly the opposite attitude that most of us have if you're going to set out to save the world you set out to save the world that's what heroes do right they gaze out at the distance in the op of their show and there's the demon lord over there on the other side of the world and they're gonna head off on a journey to get there Do you have a demon lord in your life? Like a specific endgame goal that makes a lot of sense to you that's very clearly the like purpose of your existence and that you know that you should aim for and it's like that exact thing? Do you have one of those? I think I'm close to having one, closer than many, but even mine is super vague and ethereal and I don't know how to get there or defeat it or work against it or if it's possible. So, no, I'm going to go with probably not. So is aiming towards some big endgame boss like a meaningful or worthwhile goal or way of framing the world for your life? Maybe not. Maybe 
even on smaller things like particular goals that you want to overcome let's say you want to graduate college right is your time while you're working toward that dedicated to that big overall goal every time every moment is that what's actually on your mind in every in every step of that maybe maybe that's what keeps you going maybe more likely it's the day by day the individual steps in the process if only there were some way to line those up so that in your mind truly and genuinely you believed that while you didn't have to have that total overall conscious overall big goal consciously inside your head you knew that those little steps were getting you closer to somewhere that the the everyday waking up and feeding yourself well was providing the foundations to get you an incremental distance closer to your real big goals if going and having fun was actually getting you closer to things if going and talking to people who you've never met before was increasing your party size and like all these things actually folded in and played a part in being part of this bigger journey and you could believe that the time you were spending on them wasn't being wasted or lost but instead contributing in a way that you weren't clear about to your overall growth before you knew it maybe you would have saved yourself maybe you would have saved the world around you it actually seems to be like true like true true so what if your goal is like to be a strong independent financially independent person with a uh, clean space and like and all the things that you know a, a car and all the things that make you feel like you're a full human being and whatever do you aim only for that whole goal or do you Break it into the little bits that you enjoy and do those step by step by step by step, knowing that you're getting somewhere, but not beating yourself up over not getting there fast enough. Yeah, the next step, Dalinar. Always the next step. That's the kind of adventure I want to have. One where you're not lost in the end game, but actually enjoying the levels as you pass through them. Not a speed run where you're looking to the, the clock the entire time, hoping that you're getting there fast enough, but uh, a lovely, full-featured living experience where you experience all of it in fullness because you know that those individual moments and experiences are going to be the building blocks of your life, whether they're what you want them to be or not. And then, of course, the little sneaky turn. There might also be a grimoire. Poof, and she's gone. Let's go. That piece comes back around a little bit later when we have the conversation between Fern and Freerun and Sense. And so we'll, we'll touch back on that in a moment. Ah, oh, we had enough skilled mages to make it happen. It must not have sat right with them. But at the very least... No mimic drafts. Don't worry. There are some fools who might be. I think this is so funny. The 1% like that she knows that it's probably a mimic and still logics herself into it reveals so much about Free Ren and how she works. So fucking funny. And then it's so silly being like, oh, it's so scary and dark. And then push pull. Very cool. Man, this place is not a joke. The spike wall place, the the floor crusher, ceiling crusher thing, the golems. Pretty cool. This particular angle reminds me of some stone statues coming to life in Little Witch Academia, although not quite. Although not quite. But then once we actually dive into full action, Free Ren proves, once again, effortlessly just how solid it can be with these fun, zoomy, pow, extreme action shots. The thing that strikes me about the sequences in this one is our stop start of momentum. Like it happens here in this first shot that we get of Laufen. She does this, hold, right? Let me hold hold back and catch it at the right moment. Hold, hold, hold. It's like a it frames, 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 frames. Wham! And then we hold, 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 tumble. Right? So we hold that impact in the center and hold the moments that matter most. It's really really stanky dank there are also some cool elements that just like i haven't seen before blasted away blasted back but then it's this beam that hits here she puts up a barrier for seems to be a very capable mage by the by and then warps mana into it like recombobulates that and like <laughs> your power my power shoots it back at him creating one of the cooler beam battle reversal sequences and super understated for what it is first of all those flowing like flowing 
um, helixes are really cool. And then the way that these these circles around collide, collapse, and explode explode out is really cool. Yo, fuck Harry Potter's beam battles. They ain't got nothing on this shit. Yeah, it starts to push it back, and then wha-pam! Pops it away and blasts straight through. That's so cool. And then impact frames out the wazoo. What a shot. What an ang- I don't know her name. But goddamn. I love Dankin. I, I think Dankin is the dankest. I think these shots are really fun and spicy as well. Boom! Boom. And then the blasts from the ass. Ah, God, that looks good. Sparkle, sparkle, beam, and then whoosh straight through the fog. And it's like got real texture to it as though it's burning away or something. And then welcome to a spooky fucking zone. We didn't really have to introduce this character too much because, well, she's out of here now. Dankin is dope. Moving camera is amazing. Visually really fun. Really cool. Trapped. Use the golem. Get out of here. Thanks, golem bro. No prob. And then it is mostly cutting between different locations and then sitting here. Hairstyle amazing. I don't know what this was about. These medallions, a dilettante, a particular dilettante collects them. I don't know who, I don't know what that means. I love the montage through. It's really fantastic. And then sitting and looking at all the junk is where we have this conversation. Why do these things make her happy? And this scene is so good. <gasps> Reminds me very much of um, a particular cotton candy monk in uh, Crown of Candy, the Dimension 20 show, because he's like just obsessed with old relics and he'll like go and take. Ah, ah. Perfect. But while she's incomprehensible, you're the one I don't understand. You've trained rather hard, but you don't have that determination. Her answer is that she put all her determination into it because it was her life's goal and that maybe she burned it all away. But I don't, I don't know about that. It's fair. Fern is somebody who doesn't have a lot of like personal internal motivations for things. She's very much following free run around. I must have used up all my passion and determination. So why continue searching? And the answer is made right here. There it is. That's the answer. Answered. Question asked. Question answered for free run. But not for Freeren, because she sees in Freeren someone she wants to be. She sees in Freeren somebody who's so powerful and should be so unaffected by things, so unemotional, so detached, right? And yet Freeren wholeheartedly loves this silly stuff, the grimoires, and has like purpose for her life and is like seeking things and has, has meaning, even in the meaningless, even not aimed at a demon lord to fight or defeat or something. Freeren's got purpose in the mundane meaning in finding silly things right like you here's here's here would be an analogy right i love going to garage sales i love it a lot garage sales and thrift stores i love it a lot rarely is there anything that i need at garage sales and if there is i'm at a place financially where mostly i can just go and buy it if i actually really need it so then why go and look at junk what's the point well, maybe the process means more to me. Maybe it's fun to explore the world around. Maybe it's part of a whole bunch of things. Maybe it's like going out and exploring the world and it gives me an excuse to ride around town and meet people and see their stuff and go through their, go through their garage and look at all their weird shit, you know? There's magic to it. There's something about it that's compelling. Do I need to do it? Does Freeman need to find weird old magic artifacts? No, Freeren's an extremely powerful mage. It's also not like she's looking for magic elements in order to become more powerful or something or achieve some dramatic goal. She's just doing it for fun. It's intrinsic motivation. It's in internal, internal willingness to life, right? It's like a will to live for purposes, even ones that don't seem like they should be enough to support a person's whole life, right? And yet they are especially when combined with other things. And Freeran herself might not have answers for that. She might not have, like, an end game. If you ask her, like, what are you trying to accomplish by doing this? She might not have that. She is instead living incrementally, step by step, day by day, following what she wants to follow, doing what she wants to do. And maybe in the way that Hemel does, believing that after enough of that, she will end up where she needs to end up. There's this deep fear that I think all of us can relate to, that what you're doing isn't going to get you where you want to be. 
But I think in my own experience, anytime when what you're doing is what you want to be doing, it will get you where you want to be. Whether you're aimed at something bigger or not. Now, aiming at something bigger, hugely psychologically valuable, extremely important for your dopamine systems and for giving yourself motivation extrinsically, externally, so that you've got things to be moving forward toward. But finding these things that make you enjoy the journey, enjoy the walk down to the final boss where it's going to be hard, that make it worthwhile, that's... That's what's up. And if you can find things that have the same effect on you that they have on Free Ren, when Himel says, like, maybe there's a cool grimoire there, and she goes, oh, we're going, we're going. If there are things that are like that for you in your life, if, if it's like, man, I don't, really, don't want to do anything today, and then you're like, yeah, but there's a, there's a, there's my favorite TV show comes out on Friday. <laughs> it's like, oh, I'll do anything as long as I get to watch that TV show. Now you found the thing for yourself, right? whatever whatever it ends up being if you can find those things that pull you and compel you whether it's junk or macrame or fucking beadwork or drawing or writing or making music or collecting weird stamps whatever the fuck it is if it really calls to you and pulls at you maybe you don't need more than that to justify going and pursuing it Maybe the fact that it's a fun thing that you enjoy is enough. And maybe, just maybe, there are doors that you can't even see yet that might open as you pursue it. It's pretty cool, isn't it? You know, like, what if you were a struggling computer programmer who felt empty and purposeless in your life, and you found yourself drawn toward watching and discussing media in a way that was kind of silly and didn't really have an end game. Didn't seem like it was a possibility for like really actually and actively supporting yourself, but maybe was worthwhile. There were some other people who were doing it and they seemed to be doing okay. So what if I went step by step on that and just started doing it? Oh, wait, oh, it's a few years later and here I am. Okay. <laughs> Here we are, still going step by step, still not sure where we're going, but aiming upward and we keep moving in that direction. It goes up and down, it's fluctuating, it's not a perfect process, but every day is pretty compelling and every step feels pretty good, pretty fun. Feels like I'm finding my own treasure in labyrinths and dungeons, making it worthwhile for me. So... Maybe there's some truth to this, eh? And maybe by doing it joyfully and smiling, I can make other people smile too. Maybe we can keep searching through these shows for, for magic. Make ourselves happy. Make each other happy. Experience it all. And enjoy even this brutal dungeon of life that we live through. Wouldn't that be cool? I think it would be cool. I don't know what the heck this is. It's pretty neat, pretty spicy, hints at the OP thing. Maybe that was the thing, like, we got far enough that this thing activated and, and activated the statues or something. I don't really know. But statues are sick, nasty. All fucking techniques from other people or from themselves, stealing their mana, stealing their, their moves, and... And crazy cool stuff. I guess Laufen is capable of that, right? She did extend her her staff at one point, or maybe I'm maybe not. Maybe it is more ex extensions of the character than are possible. One v ones against yourself are so sick. They're such a cool idea. This is well choreographed and really fun, even though it's small and far away. The little like th 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 so sick, so smeary, so fun. I also love this blast. Um. It's one of those things that that I said earlier that a lot of this episode feels like stop start or like action is is characterized by like hitting a wall and then pushing through it. This is literally that in moment. So like beam comes through, ba 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 ba, and then we follow it through, boom. Because like our camera locks on the wall and doesn't start off to the side. We've got a firing here. We start locked in. It impacts, holds, hold, push through, and we follow. Boom. Get blasted super sick and teamwork makes the dream work i think she's so fucking hot i don't know what it is about this character that's doing it for me but it's definitely doing it for me these replicas are super cool and 
Well, now we have a problem. The music kicks in. This is a boss battle. I don't think they can win. But, luckily, it's not actually free Ren. And, here's a curious question. Does this tomb read the visible mana signature or can it somehow know who free Ren actually is and how powerful she actually is and bring that to bear unknown unclear and not something we're going to find out today because we are going to leave it here for the day and leave free Ren be i've been informed that up through until 27 28 i think that all of the episodes should be singles is what the conclusion came to in the discord so single it shall be thank you so much for watching this week's episode of free Ren with me what a fun one like Kind of in a bunch of different realms. Not like maximally fun in one space, but like mostly fun in like four different spaces. Yeah. Like some cool animation, but not an animation focused episode. Some cool character interactions and insights into Free Ren's mentality, but not an insight focused episode. Some fun, silly, goofy stuff, but not a goofy stuff focused episode. Just a pretty solid mishmash of different elements that all flow and work together really well to make a cohesive whole, even though it has distinct different parts. I liked it a lot. I like the ideas that are present in it and the inspiration that people take from one another that's throughout it. And uh, overall, I think it was a great episode. So thank you so much for watching it with me. I'll see you next week for more Free Ren as we take down Stone Cold Free Ren herself. See you there. Much love. Peace.